Andy Johnson, we are looking at reading instruction for students who are gifted and talented. But first of all, know that there is no universal conception of what is gifted or gifted and talented. It's more than all the smart kids. So in this two-part series, video one, we're going to try to examine what giftedness is or provide a broader understanding of what it is or might be. And then part two, we are going to look at specifically how to meet the instructional needs of students who are high ability readers. So first of all, let us define our terms. Now, most definitions of gifted and talented children that recognizes students in pre-K through 12 recognize five areas, much more than all the smart kids. General intellectual ability, creative or productive thinking, specific academic aptitude, visual and performing arts, and leadership. And we will unpack those terms in just a minute, but let's look at three specific definitions. The U.S. Department of Education. You can read that to yourself, but students who give evidence of high achievement capability, evidence, okay, and whose needs, services, or activities not ordinarily provided by the school in order to fully develop those capabilities. Interesting, interesting. And notice, intellectual, creative, artistic, leadership, capacity, or in specific academic fields. Interesting, those five areas. The Minnesota Department of Education, again, outstanding abilities, requires differentiation and challenging educational program beyond those provided in the general ed classroom. And again, capable of high performance, that is a behavior in those five areas. And last, Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, evidence of high performance capabilities, performance again, those five areas, and again, need services or activities not ordinarily, ordinarily provided in a regular school program in order to fully develop their capabilities. Interesting, interesting. Ideally, schools seek to create curriculums and experiences that enable all students to develop their talents and to reach their full potential. Good gifted education is good education for all. However, one size of instruction does not fit all, whether it's reading or math or music or any such thing. Now, the definitions do not say that intellectual ability, whatever that might be, is more important than the other areas. It does not say that intellectual giftness, giftedness is more important than creativity, visual performance, leadership. All right? That is important. All five talents or talent areas are of equal importance. Now, in the definitions, if you look closely, the and or, it is possible and indeed probable that prodigious talent will show up in just one of these areas. So you could have a gifted student in, air, in the area of visual performing arts or leadership or one of these specific academic areas. And that's why we're looking at reading today. All right. Now, the five elements, let us unpack those terms. Howard Gardner defines intelligence as the ability to solve problems or create products. As the domain changes, the types of thinking necessary to solve problems changes as well. So we do not know what intelligence is exactly. It is much more than that narrow band of thinking that is measured on intelligence tests. And all uh, state requirements uh, say that giftedness should be measured using multiple criteria, not simply uh, uh, intelligence tests. Creativity, outstanding ability to generate unique ideas that lead to novel products, performances, and inventions. That is an important trait. Academic giftedness, and this is the area we're looking at here, outstanding ability in one or more specific academic area, usually those four, but we're looking at reading here. Now the arts, oh, this is what I love and what is underserved, but outstanding ability in music, drama, dance, writing, the visual arts. And then leadership, students who demonstrate outstanding aptitude in leading groups to solve a problem or work towards a common goal. Generally, this is not formally identified in the elementary grades, if at all, but we provide 
experience in intrapersonal skills and outstanding leaders and create these open-ended activities, hopefully in all of them, that lead students to develop their full potential. I like Joseph Renzulli's conception of giftedness, an interaction of three traits, creativity, ability, and task commitment. And whatever domain this is found in, that is gifted behavior. And he looks at gifted behavior, again, behavior, instead of scores on an intelligence test. The essence of effective giftedness, giftedness education is this. We want to find students with outstanding talents in whatever area they are and design programs and services that enable them to develop their talents. We want to design all programs, curriculum, and lessons and experience to enable all students to discover and develop their full potential. That, to me, is the heart of effective education and the purpose of education in general. In part two, we'll look specifically at reading instruction.